What's up guys, it's Eric from Rare Candy and welcome back to another entry into our Rogue Rumble series where we take a look at some overlooked or underrated cards and we try to make some rogue deck ideas out of them. And so for this entry we are looking at Zora Arc GX Alolan Executor. This is actually not even my deck, this list is Zach Zamoris, he recently played this at Madison Regionals. I don't know if any of you guys are following the event coverage, but overall the tournament was kind of boring in terms of the types of decks that we saw pop up. It was, you know, just a lot of Buzzwell, a lot of Zorark Lycanroc, just a lot of the standard stuff you kind of would uh, expect to see, but Zorark Alone Executor was kind of one of the fun decks that was actually doing really well at the event. Unfortunately, Zach did miss his win and end. He did finish at uh, 6 2 1, I believe it was, so just narrowly missed day two with this crazy deck, but definitely wanted to highlight it on the channel and show off this cool creation that he had such a good tournament run with. So let's take a look at it. At its core, it is, of course, just a Zorark GX deck. So let's just recap on Zorark real quick. If you guys are maybe new to the game or something, Zorark GX is, of course, that 210 uh, Stage 1 GX. Uh, has this amazing trade ability. Once during your turn before you attack, you may discard a card from your hand. If you do, draw two cards. So you have this great built-in like draw engine in the form of Zorark, and it's also just a solid attacker, riotous beating for just a DCE, just 20 for each of your Pokemon in play. So just a solid little uh, one attachment attacker, and of course, like I said, trade is kind of the engine that powers the whole deck. And trade in particular, it's usually a great ability, but especially with a low executor, it actually has a lot of synergy. So let's look at the other, uh, I guess, more interesting part of the deck we have. So we have a low end executor. This is going to be the new one from Forbidden Light. It has this tropical shake attack. Uh, also is 160 HP you know, non GX Pokemon. So a very tanky stage one right here. But like I said, tropical shake just for a single grass energy is 20 plus 20 more for each type of basic energy in your discard pile. But you can't add more than 100 damage in this way. So that means if we discard, uh, was it five energies, uh, get five in the discard pile, we can do 120 just for a single grass energy, which is pretty nice. And so if you notice, like I said, we do have Zorark GX and it has that nice ability that lets us discard cards. So if we have some basic energies in our hand, we can just trade them away, put them in the discard pile to fuel our Alolan Executors here and also draw some cards in the process. So Alolan Executor is actually pretty nice because a Lycanroc is very popular at the time of filming. So you definitely will be able to knock that out and get an easy uh, two prizes. And also too, Alolan Executor is just a non-GX. It only gives up one prize. And so sometimes Alolan Executor can be a really nice Pokemon to pivot into to force your opponent into maybe like a seven prize game since it only gives up a singular prize. So we are playing two of this guy and he is also running one of the Alolan Executor GX in his list as well. Now, I honestly don't know the reason for running this. Uh, I read online he did discuss it, but I could not find, uh, you know, where he mentioned uh, why he was particularly running the GX, but you do have an alternate attacker. I just don't know if he included it for a specific match or not. But like I said, nevertheless, we do have this as another backup attacker. So it is a 220 uh, stage 1 GX, so pretty beefy. Uh, has a couple of different attacks here. Tropical Head does 20 times the amount of energy attached to this Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So we have kind of like a, a decent little sniping attack. If you have like a grass and DCE, you can snipe 60, which is kind of decent against certain Pokemon. You can pick off opposing Zeruas or things like Ralts or 60 HP basics and things like that pretty easily. Uh, Dragon Hammer, not the greatest attack for a grass in uh, three colors is 120. Your opponent's active is now confused, so 4 to do 120, definitely not that good. Especially when we have Zorark GX, which can uh, hit for 120 for just a single DCE. But also does have a GX move, which is worth pointing out. Tower Go Round GX, 180 damage for the same attack cost. Move any number of energy from your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way that you like. So this attack actually is a little bit more relevant. Zorark GX typically doesn't have a GX attack in particular that it relies on, uh, so alone executive tour we can potentially abuse this GX attack with the choice band we hit for 210 which is going to knock out most of the popular Pokemon in the format and also if it looks like a low end executor is going to be knocked out on your opponent's next turn you can just move your energy to other targets on your field instead so low end executor uh, GX like I said I don't know of the particular matchup this is mainly for but it is at least a backup attacker we can fall back on 
So next up we have one Cartana GX. This is uh, an Ultra Beast that we got back from Crimson Invasion. Has this ability slice off. Whenever you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, uh, you may discard a special energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's kind of like an enhanced hammer, uh, but just in the form of a Pokemon. So that means it will actually fuel our Zoroark GX's attacks. And we do play a bunch of different basic energy, so we actually can abuse both Gale Blade and more importantly, Blade GX. Just for a single metal energy, you take a prize card. Pretty straightforward, so if your opponent is trying to force you into like a seven prize game and forcing you to knock out one prize Pokemon, Blade GX is a great attack at just bouncing right back onto even prizes to, uh, you know, wrap up your game by just knocking out GXs. Uh, one copy of Mew EX, pretty self-explanatory, a popular tech Zoroark dex I've been using for a while uh, for that versatile attack. Uh, we can, you know, copy our other Pokemon's attacks or even our opponents and maybe knock out things like Buzzwell GX in one hit. That's going to be the main reason we are playing this Mew is to counter our, our opponent's Buzzwells. And then just to round out the Pokemon line, two copies of Tapu Lele GX. Of course, for that Wonder Tag ability, we also have access to Energy Drive and also Tapu Cure GX, which is important to point out since we do run basic Psychic Energies in this list. You won't use it too often, but yet again, we do have the option to it uh, to abuse it if we need to. So going on to our trainer cards, one thing I will point out, Zach is playing only two copies of Bridget, which is a little bit low for uh, most Zoroark decks. I feel like uh, typically in the past, I think we've seen three to four copies of Bridget, but only the two here. I'm guessing he was just probably just a little cramped on space. Uh, but nevertheless, we have the two Bridget, of course, to search out our basics. A lot of other standard stuff, two Cynthia, two N, two Sycamore. A lot of Zoroark decks actually don't even play Sycamore sometimes, or if they do, they only play the singular copy. But two Sycamore actually kind of makes sense here because we have all these different energies we're trying to discard. So playing the extra copy of Sycamore is just another means of throwing basic energies in the discard pile. Two Guzma, of course, to choose what we want to take knockouts on. And two copies of Acerola, which also is an, kind of an interesting inclusion. Some Zoroark decks in the past do play Acerola, usually maybe only one copy. Uh, similarly, the Glycopod variant of Zoroark sometimes plays two, but I think most of the time you only see the one count. So kind of uh, interesting, we have the two count of Acerola here just to help our Pokemon tank hits a little bit better. We get put one Pokemon that has any damage counters on it and all cards attached to it back into our hand. Then going on to the trainer cards, a lot of standard stuff for Zora Arctex, of course, four Ultra Ball, four Puzzle of Time to get back resources, one Rusty Stretcher as a nice little form of recovery, two Field Blower, uh, one Multi Switch, which is a card you sometimes see in the Lycanroc variants, uh, most notably, I, I think. But you get to move an energy from one of your bench Pokemon to your active Pokemon. So just gives us a little bit of flexibility in terms of who we want to attack with. And then kind of an interesting inclusion is two copies of Professor's Letter. So this definitely makes sense in a deck like this where we need energies in the discard pile. So Professor's Letter, we can search our deck for two basic energies, reveal them, put them into our hand, and shuffle your deck afterward. So this is nice because we can grab a couple of energy, then trade them away with Zoroark GX. Or similarly, you know, our Pokemon that have basic energy attack costs, you know, sometimes the energy requirements for them are going to be tough to actually get because Think of Kartana GX just as an example. If we want to use its GX attack, it requires one metal energy. We only play one in the list. So by playing a couple of copies of Professor's Letter, it also gives us an out to more easily powering up uh, these Pokemon that use these basic energies. And then two copies of Choice Band and two copies of Floatstone, also pretty standard inclusions for Zoroark decks. And going on to the energy cards, of course, four double colors energy. That's going to be kind of the heart and soul of this Zoroark deck. That's how we are going to attack with Zoroarks and Leles, things like that. But then we also run a couple of different basic energies, of course, to uh, fulfill a, a lone executor's attack requirement. So of course, three grass energy, most importantly for executor. But then we also have some other basic energies for very specific reasons here. So we have Metal Energy, of course, uh, to use Kartana GX. We have Psychic Energy to use Tapu Cure if need be, or Versatile on Mew uh, as well. We have a Dark Energy, which we can actually use with uh, Zerua's first attack, Stampede. You're not going to use it too much, but you can also threaten like a Trickster GX, especially if your opponent doesn't know your energy counts. That is an option as well. Also have one copy of Fairy Energy. I think this is probably the most, uh, maybe like the most useless one. 
uh, that we could run into or find a use for. Maybe if our opponent is playing Fairy Garden or something like that, we can abuse Fairy Energy to get some free retreat action going. Or if our opponent has like a Gardevoir GX, uh, we can actually copy Twilight GX, which is pretty interesting to note. Also have a copy of Fighting Energy, so this means we can abuse things like Scorched Earth if our opponent's playing that. And also if we have Mew EX, we can copy things like Jet Punch, uh, to actually uh, attack our opponent's buzzles with. Uh, so there's definitely a purpose to each of these energy cards. I think the fairy energy is debatably the most useless. Uh, so if there is a different energy you wanted to try out, I guess you could. I don't think it's going to matter too much overall. Uh, but like I said, I think that maybe even the dark energy probably has the least utility here. But anyways, like I said, this is going to be Zach Zamora's list that he played at Madison Regional. So let's hop into a couple games and let's see how this deck looks in action. Alright guys, so it looks like we have ourselves a game, just going to call it the coin flip, and we do win, so that's definitely nice. Hopefully we can start to get set up a little bit before our opponent can. And okay, so we do have a Tapu Lele Star, which is normally not that great, but we actually have the raw Bridget in hand anyway, so it's not that big a deal. It would have been a little bit more annoying if we would have had to have like Ultra Balled for uh, another Lele uh, to use Bridget, especially since we only have two in this list here. But uh, yeah, luckily, like I said, we do have the Raw Bridge in hand ready to go. And here on our opponent's side, we see a Fairy Deck Box and some Genesect Sleeves. And if that's the case, this could be... I mean, I don't know how much that really tells us, but it could be a number of things. Could be Gardevoir GX, could be Sylveon, uh, could even be something like Xerneas Break or even Rainbow Road. You do see that every, every now and again. Um, so really hard to say what we're going to be going up against. But here's just a Lele start, so yet again, doesn't really tell us too much about what we're going up against. But here we're just going to get two Zeruas and an egg. We definitely want to prioritize Zor Arc since that is our draw engine. And ouch, it looks like we actually have two Puzzle of Time prized and two Grass Energy prized, which is uh, definitely not fun. I think other than that, we're pretty much good to go. Our other Lele is in the deck. Our Kartana GX is also in deck. And so here, just thinking, do we attach to Lele? But here, I think we're going to. And the reason I was kind of hesitant about it is because if this is a Gardevoir deck, I actually would have preferred maybe to hang on to it. And that way, next turn, we could Ultra Ball for our other Lele and Guzma up Ralt to knock it out. Just because Gallade is going to be a huge thorn in our side. So uh, getting a little bit greedy, just attaching to this Lele. So we'll have to see what happens here. Okay, so our opponent is going to get a Lele of their own. I'd imagine we'll probably see a Bridget come down. Moment of truth, find out what we're actually playing against here. Okay, so we are going to see a Bridget. And okay, two Zerua and a Ralt, so this is going to be a Zoro Guardi. And so now I actually am regretting attaching the DCE. I got a little bit greedy there, but like I said, didn't really know what our opponent was playing against. A lot of times what your opponent has on their deck box and sleeves is like kind of irrelevant, so... Uh, so no way of knowing that. But anyways, I think we're still okay because what we can do here, we can actually swing on this Lele for 70. And it's actually like kind of relevant because that means a Ride of Speeding or a Lowen Executor can actually just clean up the knockout. Now we could actually attach this Metal Energy and swing for 90 and basically just threaten uh, a knockout in the following turn. But I think I actually want to hang on to the Metal Energy uh, just in case we need to use Blade GX. I really want to have access to that if possible. So let's see, how is our opponent going to respond? Ideally, I really want them to miss the turn to Gardevoir or like the turn to uh, uh, Gallade because I really want to actually pick off this uh, this Ralt if at all possible. Here our opponent is going to Ultra Ball, but I'd imagine, okay, we're going to see Zoroark GX, definitely the right move from our opponent. They want to be able to set up that draw engine. Uh, to be able to start digging through their deck to actually hit those evolution pieces. And here they're going to discard a Ralts. I'm actually definitely okay with that. As long as we can take out these Ralts and prevent multiple Gallades or Gardevoirs from coming into play, uh, we're going to be in good shape here, I think. So your opponent's going to trade away a Gardevoir. Okay, also happy to see that hit the discard. I'd imagine they're probably trying to get like the turn to Gallade. Uh, just because they know how important Gallade is going to be in this matchup since it is fighting type and it can easily knock out our Zora arcs. But here they're going to bring up Zoro, so I guess they're going to take a knockout here. Oh, and okay. No knockout. I'm actually completely 
okay with this. So, all right, so we can definitely take a knockout on this Ralts. But here, I'm going to trade away this alone Executor. Definitely not that great since it is actually weak to Fairy. Uh, we don't really want to see that in this matchup. So here we can trade again. What do we get rid of? Probably Egg, I think. Egg or Ultra Ball seems like the good target or the best targets. Okay, so yeah, we can get down another Zerua. That seems good. And unfortunately now we actually will have to attach the metal energy. Like I said, I wanted to keep our options open to use Blade GX at some point, but I think taking out this Ralt is even more important. And worst case scenario, we can puzzle of time uh, to get this energy back at some point if we have to. So, so we are going to get a Rescue Stretcher off the prizes. Could be a good card at some point here. And uh, okay, so we cleared this Ralts from the field, so I feel like we're in a good spot for this next turn. So let's see what our opponent has. So here our opponent is going to get down another Ralts, so they're definitely not missing a beat there, realizing they need to set up Gallade or Gardevoir here at some point. So let's see, what is our opponent going to do? What could they do that would really mess this up? I mean, they could get a double Carver's Energy and swing on our... Lele and soften up. Actually, if they do, I really don't mind that because we could actually go for a Lele ourselves and Acerola. Okay, but no attack yet again, so maybe our opponent has some double color synergies prize. So I think now what we can do is we can definitely go for another Guzma. We have our other Lele in hand. Okay, so we have Cortana. We don't need that. So yeah, we're going to trade again. And actually, I think we need to save this fighting energy uh, because we're going to need it to retreat. Okay, so we're going to get another Zor Arc. And I guess we can get rid of an Ultra Ball. Yeah, I guess that's fine. I want to keep... Are we... Yeah, I think we have to do that. That's probably the best target. I want to keep Field Blower just in case our opponent does run Parallel City. We want an out being able to get rid of that. Okay, so here we can go for the Lele and we can go for that Guzma. To take a knockout on that Ralts. So especially if we can keep the board clear of these Ralts, I feel really confident about uh, our position that we're going to be in. And here I specifically want to attach the Fighting Energy and discard that, leaving us with the option to use Tapu Cure at some point if we absolutely have to. But like I said here, definitely want to clear these Ralts from the field because if we just have to get into like a two-shot war with our opponent's Zora Arc deck, I'm actually pretty confident we can win that. We play the two Acerola. We also have a Lowen Executor, which only gives up one prize as well. So I feel really confident. Like I said, if we can just keep these Ralts away, we're going to be in good shape. So your opponent promoted this Lele with damage. It's kind of an interesting choice. Not sure why they wouldn't promote the fresh one. Or maybe even the Zerua, the Force of Seven prize game. I'm not really sure here. So your opponent is going to trade away a Mallow. Interesting. Okay, they did get another Ralt down. So, okay. They've gone through, I think, three at this point. Because they did... I think they traded one away early on. And we've knocked out two. So this is definitely going to be their last Ralt. If we can take a knockout on it, we're going to be in great shape. Here we're going to see a Mallow from our opponent... I imagine we'll probably see a double colorless energy to start putting on some pressure of their own here. That would make sense. Oh, and they're discarding a double colorless energy. Interesting. So here they're going to play Parallel City, which is actually kind of annoying because I don't really want to get rid of our Executor. And at the same time, I really don't want to get rid of Azure Arc either because, again, that's like kind of our whole engine. Uh, so what do we do? I think we have to get rid of Azor Arc. It's it's bittersweet, but I, I, I think we have to do it. I think Alone Executor is going to be too important here. That's a sentence I never thought I would say. <laughs> uh, when you choose Alone Executor over Azor Arc GX, that's when you know you are living in a weird world. And here I'm actually glad I, uh, I hung on to that Field Blower. Because now we can get rid of that Peril City and get set back up. So here we can use Professor's Letter, just grabbing some more energy out of the deck here. And so we're going to want to trade here. We definitely want to... We're going to want to get a Guzma. Or, well, we've used both of ours. We need our second puzzle. We need a second puzzle of time here. If so, we can take a knockout on this, uh, on this Ralts. 
We only have one more trade left to us. Here, we're going to get rid of... Oh, wait. We probably should have... Okay, so slight misplay. We did get rid of the Psychic Energy. We should have gotten rid of the Fairy. Don't know how useful it's going to be here, but uh, nevertheless, kind of a suboptimal play. But, you know, I still think we're in a good spot because what we can do here is, even though we whiffed the uh, knockout on this Ross, we can still take a knockout with a Lone Executor because right now we can play this Rescue Stretcher, gets a Pokemon back in the deck, but we can retreat this Lele and discarding that Metal Energy will put us at 100 damage to knock out uh, this active Tapu Lele. And I really don't think this Executor is in any danger of being knocked out because our opponent would need... Let's see, if they have like Fairy Energy, or I'm sorry, uh, Double Colorless Energy, Secret Spring, they're only going to be hitting for 120. And I just really don't think our opponent has a way to knock out this Executor. So I think we're going to be in a fine spot. And here, what do we do? Do we save our hand? Nah, I guess we just go for the Cynthia. I really want to get um, two puzzles at once if possible. Well, that's even worse, so uh, maybe I should have just held on to the Cynthia here. Uh, but nevertheless, we do have two Zorark, so we can just keep trading away. And uh, here we can use Tropical Shake, taking a knockout. Like I said, it's going to be just enough to knock out this Lele. So let's see what we can get. We get a Puzzle of Time and a Double Chorus Energy. Definitely good cards to hit here. So let's see how our opponent is going to be able to respond. Like I said, even if they get out Gardevoir, not really too worried. Or even if they get out Gallade at this point, not really stressing that too much either because we can soften up with a Lone Executor because they can't knock us out in one hit. And then we can finish it off with something else if need be. So also, guys, I think we're in a good spot. I think our opponent just whiffed energy too many turns. But let's see. Um, so we are going to see Puzzle of Time come into play. I'm imagining this is going to be a double puzzle to get two cards out of the discard pile. So let's see, maybe double colorless energy. They did trade away one earlier. Um, or they could actually get a Mallow and get... Okay, so they're going to go for a Gardevoir and a Guzma. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to see a rare candy, candy Gardevoir here. We're going to see trade. Getting rid of a Max Potion, okay. Happy to see that hit the discard pile. So it makes me, that leads me to believe that they're either going to knock out this Zerua or knock out this Lele. If our opponent, yeah, because they would need Choice Band, Fairy Energy, Double Colorless Energy, and a Float Stone to pull that off. Not sure what they have in hand, but um, it is possible we could see that happen. Okay, so we're going to see another Puzzle of Time come down. Getting back a Fairy and Double Color Center, I'm actually completely okay with that. Those are cards I really don't mind seeing. Really glad our opponent did not get the Max Potion back. That actually would have been a big card here. So, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe our opponent plays two Max Potions. I don't, I don't know. We'll have to see, but I definitely think being able to get Max Potion would be big here since our opponent is kind of in danger of just getting one more GX knocked out. So here, even though they did knock out the Slayway, not really too worried about it because we can... Pretty easily two shot this Gardevoir if we need to. So you're just gonna bench. Hmm. Do we bench the Zerua? I I think we do. The only thing reason I'm like conflicted about is because we could potentially keep our board open for both a Kartana and a Lele. So here we're gonna trade, we're gonna get rid of the fairy energy now, since it's not too useful at this point. And do we play our other Field Blower? Here we're going to trade away this end. Definitely don't want to see that anymore. And I'm just thinking... Hmm. I'm just trying to think. If our opponent plays two Parallel City, that would actually be kind of bad. So I think I actually just might sit on this hand. There's not really too much that, that we want here. Okay, so our opponent's going to trade away a Bridget. Definitely always a good target. So let's see. To knock out this Executor, I mean, they're going to have to keep committing energy to, to this Gardevoir. And it's going to be going down, so they really need to... Okay, so here they're going to get down another Double Colorless Energy. Which, 
you know, that's what they need to take a knockout here, but at the same time, they're only getting one prize, and this Gardevoir is pretty easily going to be able to be KO'd. Okay, I mean, our opponent did do the right thing, they did end us down to two cards, but unfortunately for them, did get the, the uh, Cynthia here, so really glad I didn't overextend and play supporters unnecessarily there. Here, I'm going to promote this Zerua. And, okay, so this is actually okay. We can get down the Floatstone, and we can get down the Choice Band on Zorark. So then all we need to do is fill our bench and get the DCE, and we should be able to take a knockout on this guard bar. And here we have it. So we can actually just put down Lele. Just want to make sure real quick, because right now, 24, 60, 80, 100, 24. Yeah, so we are in good shape. All we have to do is attach the double Karos energy. We can retreat. And we can just use Energy Drive to take the last knockout here against this Zora Art Gardevoir deck. So they had a little bit of a sketchy start, and I mean, I don't know what was in the hand, but it looks like they traded away a couple of things that might have been a little integral to closing out that game. But here, let's try out another one and see how we can fare here. So our has a colorless deck box. Yet again, I don't know how much that is going to really tell us here. Um, I don't really know of any colorless decks that are really popular <laughs> right now, so probably isn't going to mean too much. But here, our opponent has Crabominable in hand. That's that's pretty annoying, actually. So, uh, Crabominable can definitely one-shot our Zora arcs. And here we open up with Double Egg and a Lele. So, actually, we have a pretty solid little opening hand we can Lele for Bridget. Here, I'm just going to opt to uh, hang on to the other egg. Just going to save the bench space just in case. Okay. But yeah, we have the two Executors. We're definitely going to need both of these, I think, to uh, actually win this matchup here. Just because our opponent's playing Baby Buzzwell as well. All sorts of fighting stuff. So we're going to be relying very heavily on these things to actually close out the game. So here we're going to go for Bridget. We can grab, of course, a couple of Zeruas here. We're definitely going to need those to get set up. So even though, like I said, we are going to need to fall back on these uh, low end executors, nevertheless, we still need our draw engine in the form of Zorark. Okay, so here, what do we do? What do we do? We could, I mean, if we leave this egg active, all our opponent needs is a strong energy and they can just knock us out. So I really don't want to do that. So here actually, I might just retreat this egg. It'll put a fairy in the discard pile and it'll preserve these executes for us. And here we're just going to pass. So I don't think our Lele is in any danger of being knocked out. Unless our opponent plays Buzzwell and gets a bunch of elixirs. But here they just got down the fighting energy. So we're probably only going to see... Uh, okay, our opponent does play Buzzwell. So really not sure what type of deck this is. I don't know if it's going to lean heavier on Carbominable or if it's more of a Buzzwell deck. So we'll just have to see what our opponent's going to do here. So here we're just going to see a Sledgehammer coming down doing 40 damage to this Lele. And, okay, I think we just evolve both of these Executors. And actually really glad our opponent did put down this Regirock, because that actually can be potential win condition for us, since it is weak to grass. So what do we do here? I think we just... Unfortunately, we didn't get double Carus energy. So I think we just attach to this Lele. Because next turn, if it gets knocked out, that's fine. It puts a Dark Energy in the discard pile. And also, if it doesn't, we can retreat it putting a Dark Energy in the discard pile. But here we're going to see a retreat into Buzzle. I'm going to use... Okay, they're going to go for a Lily first, but going to start Jet Punching us, setting up knockouts on these Executors, which is actually pretty big because with Sledgehammer, uh, that baby Buzzle's first attack, it'll do uh, 120 if uh, I do knock out this Buzzle GX. And if they can put 30 on this Alolan Executor, that's actually going to set up a Sledgehammer to take a knockout since he does have Regirock in place. That's actually really important to note here. So we're going to get down a few Zorark GXs. Try to think what all we need this turn. So here we're just going to trade, getting rid of this Alolan Executor GX. I definitely think we're going to rely more on this non-GX one this matchup. So here we can trade. Here we can get rid of uh, Fighting Energy. And, okay, so we're just going to energy drive here. Uh, doing 110 to this Buzzwell. Unfortunately, we are going to be knocked out next turn. But we do have these one prize attackers to fall back on if we do need to as well. So your opponent is going to Cynthia. 
And they do have this Orangaroo in play. That's definitely going to be good for our opponent in case of an end after taking like a knockout here. Here opponent is going to get Kerbomitable in play. I believe it's like 80 damage. And then it does damage to itself equal to the amount of damage counters already on it or something like that. So definitely very easy at knocking out Zoroarks, especially with Diancy uh, that they just got in play and this Regirock EX. So let's see what our opponent's going to do. They are going to instruct... And then I believe thanks to this Diancy, they will be able to take a knockout. Or actually, I think even without it, they were, yeah, they were in a fine spot to do so. So unfortunately now, we're in a spot where both of our alone executors have 30 damage on them. And just trying to think, what do we do here? So we do have Grass Energy, which is, of course, definitely important. And we do have, I believe, three energy in the discard already. So we should, yeah, we should have just enough to take a knockout. Let's double check. We have, what, fairy, okay, fairy fighting and dark. So yeah, we're doing just enough. And what do we do? We could, we could Acerola. I think maybe I should have done that in hindsight, like looking back at this game. I'm just trying to think, I want to be able to like grab an N or something like that. If our opponent like is able to take a knockout on like a Zor arc or something next turn, I was thinking I really want to find an N and punish them if they do have like a Guzma and could knock out Zorark. So I don't know if I made the right decision or not, but I definitely think preserving these executors would have been a nice thing as well. But nevertheless, I actually think we have a pretty good hand we can hang on to here. I'm gonna trade away Sycamore. Um, we could play Kartana GX actually. But at the same time, hmm. Yeah, maybe in hindsight we should have done that. So maybe I'm playing just a little sloppy this game, guys. Uh, we do hit Puzzle of Time and Ultra Ball off the prizes here. So definitely good prizes to get. Here they're going to get down another Fighting Energy, and they're going to play a Lily here. And we're just going to see a Sledgehammer coming down on this Alolan Executor. But actually, I kind of like the spot we're in because we can actually Guzma up this Regirock and take a Knockout on it, which will actually turn off Sledgehammer. Oh, we actually pop deck the Lele, so that's even better. So what do we do? What do we do? Um, yeah, we're definitely going to need to go for the Guzma. That's like definitely for certain. We're going to have to go for Puzzle of Time as well to get this Grass Energy back. So here, let's at the least play the Lele. And go for Guzma here. And like I said, we're going to need a puzzle of time here as well. So what do we get? We definitely need grass energy. And beyond that, just trying to think, what do we get? Uh, we could get back another egg. That is a potential option. I kind of like that. But at the same time, uh, I kind of want to keep a bench spot open for, for some of the other stuff that we have as well. Uh, really not sure what we should go for here. Definitely the Grass Energy, like I said, like absolutely for certain, but... Or we could get back like a double colorless energy even, or maybe Lele. Uh, I have no idea what to actually get here. This is one of the downsides to Zoroark decks. A lot of times you do have a lot of micro decisions you can make, but here we're just going to go for the egg just in case. And so we can bench it. So here, let's trade away. Let's get rid of this N. And okay, we're gonna get another Zor arc into play. Definitely something I want to see here. We'll trade. We'll get rid of. I guess an Ultra Ball seems fine to me. Let's be able to do that. And we can trade some more. What do we get rid of? We could get rid of Ultra Ball. Could get rid of some Pokemon since we have Rescue Stretcher available to us. Here we're just going to bench the egg. Kind of torn. I really kind of wanted to play Kartana GX here as well and get rid of that uh, energy on the Crabominable. That would have actually been... Yeah, I definitely think that would have been the play, guys. I think I'm... Yeah, I'm playing just kind of sloppy this game. So I do apologize about that. To be fair, though, this is literally like the third game I ever played with this deck. But nevertheless, I think we can still win this one despite my suboptimal plays in this one. Uh, we are going to take a knockout on this Regirock EX here, and if our opponent ever gets down on the Buzzwell GX, we do have this Mew available to us uh, to clean up a knockout with as well. So your opponent's going to play Crushing Hammer, okay? 
and a Guzma. Okay, so actually this is a situation where I wish I would have kept that in. And I don't feel too bad about not benching the Kartana now, just because our opponent did have another strong in hand anyways. Oh, we actually top deck another end. That's definitely what I want to see here. So what do we do? What do we do? We definitely have a lot of options available to us. We could... Hmm. Could bench Mew and try to take a Naka here, but then this baby Buzzle is just like one attachment away from knocking us out. Hmm. Well, first, I, let's trade. We should probably just get rid of this Bridget. So let's do that real quick before we stress out about what we want to do here. Uh, we do get Professor's Letter. Um, hmm. So we could play that at the very least and see what all we have left in deck. I don't think we have any more. Yeah, we don't have any more energy in there. Nothing really too important in the actual deck itself either. So we could go for Field Blower. I don't know if we need to or not. Actually, you know what? I think what we can do here is... Okay, yeah, what we can do here is... I like this. We can play Cortana GX, and we can discard our opponent's energy, ideally on the active, uh, just to strain it. Or we could even do it from the bench. But here, let, no, let's just trap the active. And what we can do is attach this metal energy, and we can play in and put them at a low hand size and take one prize with uh, Blade GX and then next turn we can just Guzma something for the final knockout. So we do, I think we play Rescue Stretcher. I don't think we want much back in our actual deck. So let's just grab Executor and get another Executor into play. We can play Ultra Ball, what do we get rid of? I think we get rid of Yeah, let's just get down a float stone. I think we get rid of field blower here, actually, just because we don't really want to field blower that float stone because they could get a choice band down and potentially knock out Kartana or something like that. So I want to limit our opponent's options of doing that if possible. So let's get rid of a grass since we have another one still in deck. And I think the field blower, that seems okay to me. And then from there, we can just play this in. And even though we're only going to get two cards, we don't have that many cards left in deck, so we should be able to just dig for whatever we need to uh, close out this game. And here, I believe we still have one more trade available to us, so we can get rid of this choice band as well. Also, not a card that I think is very relevant at this point. And, okay, we do have Mew, so that actually could be... Uh, potentially be relevant here. Here, we're going to do Blade GX, and we hit Puzzle of Time. That's actually really big. If our opponent doesn't have game then I'm pretty sure we just win. Oh, but here our opponent has Guzma. Do they have the energy? They only get two cards here. They need something really... They really need something here, otherwise we just win. Because all we can do, we can Guzma for a Gu... Or, I'm sorry, we can double puzzle for Guzma, and I think either... I think we have a double Chorus in there, but... Even if we don't, we can just get a grass energy. But here we're just going to get hit for 140, so we are actually in a fine spot. And we top deck the grass energy. We don't even need to puzzle for it either. So here we can double puzzle. Definitely want to play two at the same time. And uh, like I said, we can get double colorless energy, or we can not. It doesn't matter. We have the grass also in hand. So, well, Guzma, let's bring up the Dianti Prism Star. It's weak to grass anyways. And here, of course, we're going to take the final knockout with Alolan Executor here with Tropical Shake doing 240 damage to this poor little Dianti. And that is going to be the game. So, yeah, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at this crazy Alolan Executor deck that popped up at Madison Regionals. Uh, big shout out to Zach Zamora again for posting his list online and congrats on his tournament run that he had. But as usual, feel free to like and subscribe, and if you guys can support this channel by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash rarecandytcg, or by picking up something from our online store at rarecandytcg.com, it'd mean a lot. But with that, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you for the next one.